uh, speech is by Augusto, who's the CEO of uh, Kong, and he calls it the 2,525 days of struggle. So basically, uh, here's my theory on this. Uh, sign up for an infinite number of struggling days that you're going to struggle if you're going to do a startup. Yes, there's fun days. Uh, unfortunately, I think a lot of people think that it is just fun, but there's definitely tough days. So with that, Augusto, come tell us about uh, your days of struggle. Hello. Hi. Hello, everyone. Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? No. OK, good. <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm Augusto. I'm, um, I grew up in Rome, and then I live in San Francisco since about five years. And I'm going to tell you a little bit of our story, which is handless. It's a lot of blood. It's the things you want to hear about it. And uh, so we're going to go through this journey uh, together. So first of all, who is using APIs or building an API or consuming APIs? Yeah, a lot, a lot of you. If I asked that question about five years ago, it was pretty much nobody. And, and seven and eight years ago was maybe one hand. So let's go through this. And I asked this question because in 2009, uh, Marco, my co-founder and CTO and I, we were, this is the desk of uh, a room in, uh, in Milan. We started to uh, building, a, let's say, I don't know if you remember, I don't know if you know Zapier, you know, if this, then that. So we're building this mashups platform, and back in the days, mashups were very popular, like Google Maps with some weather things. And, and we want to build this by having a very simple GUI where you will click, I want to mash up with Flickr, with Expedia, and, uh, and then I would embed it on a site, and then through photo, I can book a site, uh, a plane where the, the photo's been taken. And that was really, the true idea of that was to give my parents the ability to build applications. Now, it turns out my mom doesn't want to build applications at all. So that was kind of the first market test reality, but I totally ignored. So I keep going and say, yeah, we need, everybody should be a developer. Just click the button and build applications. Back then, we called it widgets. So we start to, hey, let's do the startup things. Uh, we're 19 years old, 20, actually, when we started this. And uh, we started in a garage, kind of a garage in, um, in Italy. So we start, uh, you know, taking things on Craigslist. We're basically paying 200 bucks, like cash, to 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 the le to the landlord, and we start to kind of build a startup. So we go to IKEA. We put a lot of things. We put the desk ready to go. Uh, some glasses got stolen along the road. So, but we felt like a real, real startup. And uh, and so what happened is that coding begins, right? So we start to build this computer. We we write stuff on the wall better, faster, and cheaper, and the usual bullshit. And, and, uh, and we get excited. That, that poster on the right is the Silicon Valley map. So we built that Silicon Valley map. And so every time we do the stairs, we, we had Silicon Valley right there calling. So we started building. Obviously, nobody was getting paid. It was just try the things together. Uh, and then we tried to raise money in Italy, which back then in 2010, or actually 2009, venture capital in Italy, they ask you, a full forecast plan, uh, profit and loss for five years, and, and you're just there with, um, with the Silicon Valley poster on the wall. And so say, okay, and we try about one year. So it's like, okay, this, is not, this is not good. Uh, let's, let's actually go to TechCrunch. So back then was TechCrunch 50. And TechCrunch 50 was before TechCrunch disrupt. There was thousands of people. It was, was pretty good. For example, big companies like Cloudflare, they launched a, a dead TechCrunch 50 in 2009. So we go and apply to be a TechCrunch 50 in September. So we did a crazy video, which I don't have it, but uh, maybe if some of you want to see it, you can, I can share it, But because uh, it lasts five minutes, so we don't have time. But we got, we got accepted, and so we built a first prototype, say, OK, let's, let's add this plus this plus that, and we get this application. And it was really horrible. And, um, and then we need to close the loops and move to US. So I got a degree, kind of degree in Italy, because it's only three years. That's my chair. And, uh, and that's what I have. That's the, the, the day I get graduated half of it, because it's three plus two, I did only the first three. I, came, I, just, I just say, OK, thank you. Thank you, bye-bye. I left the university. I went straight to my garage, because I just feel it to be there. And then Marco, my co-founder, which was a year younger, he drops out. Say, OK, I'm not even trying to, to, to go to college. <laughs> And, uh, and so we, 
get a septic crunch 50, but we don't have actually a lot of money to, to take a flight and be there and go there. So I found out somehow that Travis Kalanick, which is the founder and, ex, and uh, used to be the CEO of Uber, but back then he was just getting started with Uber, that he was going to give couch or place to his house to everybody apply. So I call him from my mom's apartment four times, never answer. Call a fifth time, call, call and say, which, uh, back then I, I wasn't really speaking English well. I mean, not that I'm now speaking it really well, but, but back five years ago it was, it was horrible. And trying to, to, to speak uh, somehow and tell we want to come there, we, we got the Crunch 50, please get us. He got like 30 applications, and I don't, I don't know how, why, he picked us. So he said, yeah, guys, come on my place. And he, he had a good um, place already because he sold a previous company called Redwoosh for 20 million before starting Uber. So it, it was very well, and he was really helping entrepreneurs along the road. And so we got to the Travis house. So you had this barbecue place. That's Travis with the red T-shirts. That's Marco, my co-founder, behind the barbecue. That's, that's his backyard. So we started to do this uh, jam pad. It was the era of jam pad. You can Google jam pad. And jam pad was basically, was opening his house to start up and entrepreneurs in the early stage to help and network. And he was doing uh, barbecue and burgers and all of that. So it was really magical moment. So in, in an event like this, I met, for example, Iron leave on the line to bathroom when he was with Box, and Box was only um, a 50 or 70 people company. And so you get all this networking magical, and again, we're coming from Italy, so for us it was like, wow. And so the funny stuff is that we need to go to TechCrunch 50. He lives on the hill of, he used to live on the hill of Castro, and he took us 35 minutes to find a cab. And, 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 and that was like, and then Michael Fond and I go back and remember that moments, and he was actually starting Uber already, but we had a frustration in finding a camp quite, quite for a while. So we go, we go to TechCrunch, and uh, we start building T-shirts, build, uh, and I make friends with Jaroff, and, uh, and this is, was really the event back in the days. It was, you see here you have all the, it was about two, 3,000 people, and then you have a, um, a startups expo era with a lot of startups. And it was, I think uh, I, I love a lot that, that experience that we had that. And so we were very angry. So even our business card, they had a burger on the back to show you the mashups kind of things. To, because the idea was put on the back of your card what you're doing in one sentence. So we weren't sure really what we were doing, but we knew we were hungry, so we put, we put that thing on the back. And uh, so visa expires. I don't know, how many of you are international? Okay, how many of you are the problem with Visa? Okay, half of you are safe. So Visa expires every three months because we were basically with the tourist visa. So we go back and forth to Italy and we come back. And uh, we come back after the Crunch 50 for three months. And we sleep in this motel on Lombard for a lot, a lot of days. And that that's really was our home. It was three of us. And this is what we were eating for 40 days. And I don't recommend it. And uh, actually, we lost weight. And, uh, and, uh, and we had 90 days to make it or break it or go back. So you really go big or go home. So we had 90 days to actually go and raise some capital at this point so we could move back here again. So two months later, in the same motel, that's me falling asleep. It's, uh, it's three weeks left before we have to come back because of, of course, we didn't have the financing to support San Francisco, which was much cheaper in 2010. But also, actually, the visa expires. The, the, the three months visa expires. So we have only three weeks left. So at this point, it was pretty brutal. And uh, so what happened at, after that sleep, the day after I went to Stanford, we had the Stanford Entrepreneurship Week, which is the end of February. I don't know if they're still doing it. But they had an event with a lot of 400 investors open to everybody. So on the way out, they had a paper with 400 emails of all the attendees. I just took that thing out of desperation and brought it with me. <laughs> and I went back home, I mean home, and uh, I just passed four hours, five hours emailing everybody saying, nice to see you, uh, would like to, even if I haven't met anybody, but I probably met 20 people, but it was nice to see you, good luck. And one of this person actually answered, and it was Kevin Donahue. And he say, and this is the second email when he started visiting us, but before that he had another email say, I don't think we ever met, but I, I think you guys are like you and what you're doing is interesting, and uh, let's go and meet. And so we went and meet, and then he brought more people. So it was a very early on YouTube, 
one of the top ten, uh, first 10 employees at YouTube and then became vice president of content. And he brought Dweepa, which was the, the first engineer of YouTube for mobile applications, and then Dave, which was the first YouTube lawyer. So kind of the first founding teams. And uh, so he started with him, brought the other two, and they decided to invest the first 51K. So this is 19 days because it's 19 days from the moment I met, I met the person sent that email to the moment they wrote the check. So it was exactly 19 days. And it was, so the funny part here is that they wanted 50K. And I say, no, 16.66666, I don't like it much. Let's go 17, 17, and 17. That's how it became 51. <laughs> um, and so, and then another Italian entrepreneur which uh, lives here, but he used to have a company, a consulting company with 1,000 employees in Italy, he put another 50K. So overall, it was 100. But that was really the beginning of something. Also, we had to go back. So, but the first thing we do, we buy a bunch of food and we throw a party. <laughs> <laughs> So we threw a big party there, um, and, uh, I, I, and we spent so much money just, just to see those big craft of alcohol and all that. But um, I hope there's no underage. But, but, but we, we was the fan. This is like, I don't know if it feels it feel like freedom. Something like freedom. 51K for us, it looked like 50, $500 million when you had zero. So it was like, we, we're going to make it, right? Yeah, we're going to make it. So <laughs> need a real place to work. And so Travis come back and called a couple of friends, and uh, they say, we, we just upgraded from ramen to flavored ramen. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, <laughs> and so we, he got us a very good place on the Embarcadero, where it was social media office about uh, six, seven years ago. So we start and build this intro platform, mashups. We're still kind of figuring out what we're going to do. So we went to, we spent a couple of, a good amount of dollars, we went to Hawaii, in Waikiki, and when I'm done one of those beaches is like, let's take a step back and, and where we're going. So we pivoted that thing into, into something that actually at least makes sense, which was an API marketplace. So think about GitHub or eBay, but for brokering APIs. So you, you list your API or you come through, through Meshape to look and find for APIs. So that was the whole pivot. And we started building it. And we built it so fast. That after two months, we, we actually released the first, um, the first uh, API marketplace uh, alpha version. And when you launch something, nobody cares. You keep launching the same thing. So we launched a private alpha, private beta, public beta. It was the same thing just to get. We, we get on all the tech blogs like five times, but it was the same thing. I was just changing the name from alpha to private beta, public beta. <laughs> I was just keep going. <laughs> um, and nobody still cares. So, okay, because this is a building a marketplace. So how many of you are building marketplaces in some shape or form? So marketplace, you know, you have this chicken eggs problem with supply and demand that never comes in, and, and it's just very hard. Like if you're selling a SaaS business like Intercom, okay, you, put the, like you have the thing and you sell it. But a marketplace, you always have the problem of liquidity, so it takes years, and obviously the Airbnb guys have a lot, a lot to tell you about in the story on the web. Actually, I also slept at the Airbnb original office when there were seven people when I was moving between motels and Travis Couch. But they teach you how hard it is to market. But so we say, I always say, my co-founder and CTO was always saying, this thing is not going anywhere. He say, no, look at the Airbnb guys. It took them two years to get liquidity. And then, so we are doing something for developers, so let's put four years to get liquidity. It's totally normal. And, uh, and, and so it just takes way more. So we launched first time. And um, this is a couple of things from the blog of back in the days. But when everything goes, when something goes wrong, everything goes wrong. So we, we were moving around the city with bikes bought at $70. We bought them in um, Mission Street in Valencia. And, uh, and they stole my bike too. And, uh, and so we were living in, um, uh, in this particular moment, I was living in Cesar Savets, 24. And the, this place with Travis Fandas was on Embarcadero. So it was like 25 blocks. And so that's why we had bikes. And, and then they stole the bikes. So the next weeks and months, we had to walk 25 blocks. There was no Uber back then, and we didn't actually want to pay for it. So at least I got stolen our bikes, and there's also a lot of other stuff interesting. Back in the days, you see, MongoDB was really strong. And so, but those 51K are not, are not even 5 million. They're going to run out again. So we, we live a little bit on Airbnb. It's, uh, we're living tree. And uh, it's about 1K a month because 
you don't have social security number, you don't have credit score, you can get a credit card, you, nobody wanna rent to you because you, you, they think you, you will escape with the whole house. And, and, uh, and so you get in this very bad situation where you're a little bit stuck. So what we decided to, you, we decided to do, because we couldn't get payrolls because we don't have social security number, because we don't have a visa, so the company was issuing a promissory note. So if you have a startup in San Francisco, you don't have visa or SSN to, to pay yourself, you can do a promissory note every month which will be forgotten in about two years. So we were doing this, 1,000 myself and 1,000 the other two co-founders, and we were living like this. And most of them were going on rent. Now, back then, a rent was $1,000 for a studio, not 3,000, so it was a little bit better. But still, it, it, it was this kind of a grade zone where you're getting money out of the company, and they're not a real payrolls money. So we also go out and we do networking with a lot of folks. I, I had way more hair than now. And uh, that's what he does when you do startups for quite, for quite some time. But that really helps building and networking. So we knew that the same way as a Stanford, we found the first 51K, by doing this over again, we would find our real seed round. And in SF, really everything. And it's really the only difference between doing it somewhere else, is that you can leverage all of this, and everybody is, is happy to help. There is no ego. Uh, everybody wants to learn. And so we got a lot of good, uh, good funders here. And then we go out, this is a, a slide deck that we took out from the seed round. And, uh, and uh, see, I, I took it fast and furious because I, we didn't have a designer, so just taking screenshots of great movies and then put, put, put stuff on top of our story. So one million seed was a lot back then because in 2011, uh, seed was 500K on average. But we ended up actually higher than that, but uh, it's, funny, it's funny that, that a lot of folks ask, why that person has 4K a month, so you have 2K a month, and, and there was actually a, a reason for that. We, we just wanted to look very cheap, so to, to, to make investors confident that their money is gonna be well spent. So, so we go out and we get 20 rejections as usual, um, and the, the funny stuff is that, I don't know how many venture capitalists there are in the rooms, we know quite a few, and. And so we say it's kind of the soft no, because if after you take off, you don't want to screw your relations, so they're always gonna send you soft no. They're never gonna tell you why. And you never know there is so many back channels and things, so they're always soft no for the future. So we got a bunch of soft no, but eventually, and I keep it open because He's, now he looks like a genius, no, it's bad, but <laughs> um, George Zachary, which uh, it was an um, investor in Twitter uh, back then, and uh, it was a CRV, which was called Charles River Ventures. So we bothered him so much that in, the, in 2009, when we went to TechCrunch 50, he really didn't know what we were doing when we were doing the, the internal platform, and in fact, he wrote the first email saying, I don't know what you're doing. And then, and then two years later, he remembered and said, oh, we're excited, so we want to invest. And, uh, and so we got the first 100K for uh, the $1 million round. So we closed the round with also NEA, Index, Jeff Bezos. And a lot of people ask me, how do you get Jeff Bezos in the cap table? Well, it's very simple. The lawyer of his family office in Seattle, uh, uh, I found out who is it, and I started to hire him. And then I said, hey, by the way, can you introduce me to Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> and that's how we got it, Jeff. Uh, one phone call, he was on a road trip with his brother in the middle of, uh, I'd say, put, actually wanted to put way more money, but I don't know why I didn't let him do it, and now he owns almost 1% of the company. But that's how it happened. So you can, you can raise money from everybody, just so you need to have the right strategy. Then uh, Visa expires again, so we go, this thing, this screen, I hate, I throw up on it, I've seen it so many times. And so you go up and down, boom, 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 every three months, so finally we got a Visa. So back then, Sam Alta was not the president of Y Combinator, he was running looped. We were going to this NEA retreat after NEA led our seed round, and uh, it was next to me in the bus, and I say, that looks great, but can you also write us a letter? And so he was one of the five or six persons that wrote us a recommendation letter to get on a one visa. So we get the one visa, we come back, we build this, uh, we keep developing the marketplace, we have one million and a half, this is how early we work. We go back to Ikea another time, I'm not very happy to do Ikea all over again, all the way to Oakland and back to, to fill up the office, we also went to Nike News for the first time. We tried 55 times. Finally, someone, someone really cares about it. And, uh, and we also get an Acker House because we wanted to be like the Facebook thing where people jump from the roof. We didn't have a pool, but, but uh, uh, we, 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 I don't know who is the other guy, but, but we, we start to, <laughs> <laughs> but we started to, to, 
let's uh, say, to really build it. And uh, oh, that, this is, looks really a startup. Like two years ago, we were in a garage uh, in, uh, in Italy. Now we are in an Acker house on Bryan Street. And uh, so we, we go, and um, you know, there's a lot of, uh, we started, you need to be careful between real metrics and vanity metrics. But the, the API requests that were going through the market were starting to grow and grow, and they had an inflection point. So by having an inflection point, we start to prepare for fundraising for our Series A. And Series A, we start to build all these great metrics. Now, the real secret is that it's, uh, Series A is probably the hardest round because you're not based on metrics and you're not anymore investing only on people. You're kind of half away. So we start to build all this stuff because it was hard to actually measure. So the Series A was really, really, really hard. It took like 30 snows. Um, and it went from July, July to November. And uh, so what happened at one night, <laughs> On a Saturday night, I was going to sleep earlier because I had VC meeting, and these investors, which is CRV DevTad, which is partner of George Sagari, but focused on enterprise, he, I don't know if he really believed it in the thing, but he kind of liked it us, and he went to look at the Acker House and all of that, and he kind of wanted to prove if we really want to do it, so he put me a meeting at 6 a.m. on a Sunday morning in Palo Alto. So I had to go sleep earlier to get there, and then we had like a five hours walk up and down the mountain of Stanford. I, I could never say I was tired or I needed water. I would just like it to go, yes, and then we'll keep walking over in the morning. But my other co-founder got this uh, Oli water from I don't know where, and he sprayed on me the night before without telling me nothing. So that was how the situation was. Um, that was about October, so it was pretty brutal. We had only 45 days left, but that made it. So after that walk, we, we finally raised it, money, and CRV and, and Index collab, and not even our lawyers would believe it. To say, I don't believe you guys, like how you guys made it, because this was pretty brutal, because we didn't have the metrics to run a, a proper Series A. So it was totally actually investing on the people, and obviously those walk at 6 a.m. Uh, helps at the end. So CRV and Index led the round, and um, Michael, now it's the firm-wide chair of Perkins Coie, which is like top, top president. I always joke with him, you got that job because of us. <laughs> but uh, he was a great partner too, but it just got elevated to that, to that point. Um, and so we got this great money, and the first time you do, you have great money, and you want to get a great office. So you, you take this great office, spend a lot of things, never do that, until you have product market fit. So we build this thing, we have great office in, um, in um, Montgomery Street. Uh, and we launched this new version of the API Marketplace called it V5. And it was the most buggy version ever. And this was my co-founder sleeping after we pushed code at 4 a.m., full of bug, building goes all over the roof. And we were about 15, 20 people back then. And uh, at the same time, there was a flat revenue. We were increasing barns, so things were not looking good again. And, uh, and so it was already a year in, and we were burning cash. And so we know we had to go to Series B where we need some revenue, some product market fit, otherwise we would end up like this. And so we go back to our investor that led the A. Luckily, they believe in us in this new pivot. We want to pivot the company, and, uh, and, uh, and they put a little bit more money to keep going. We wouldn't be here without them. So VC, are the, I think, are, are like your marriage. So if you really marry great people, you're going to go long roads. And uh, so in the meantime, we're going at 100 miles per hour against the wall. So I start to send an email to everybody to say, let's try a bunch of experiments with a few millions left in the bank. Forget about all we have done for four or five years. And you're like, what? Um, and you lose some people in the process because you're basically selling other direction. But one of the things was, let's open source the core technology that we're building to run the marketplace for uh, everybody. So in the meantime, that, that great office get floated. And, uh, and so we got flooded, and then we moved to Marco's house to, to code. And it looks good, because you have that energy back again without all the good things of a good office. You feel pain, so you feel pain, and you want to keep going back like back in the days. You don't want to give up. You go back to the seed mentality. And so th this, is, I think, was a really good experiment, because we open source and became the most popular open source API gateway and API management platform since then. So the whole company now became Kong. And it was just one of those experiments. So we finally, things start to work. We've, we grow 27x on adoptions, on running instances. Uh, we hire the first salesperson, and uh, customers come. So there is a bunch of files. We don't have a, a, a support team yet, so all our engineers are trying to support each other. So we, we have like this kind of situation where you have burn rate. Again, revenue is going up, but it's not enough to pay the expenses. We're running out of cash. So I say, fuck it. I'm going out and race again. 
So, <laughs> say, and, and then boom, I got a raise again. And guess what? Because the product was growing so well, that it was much easier to raise a Series B than raise a C than an A. In fact, now we were rejecting VC. And we got four or five term sheets. I was like, whoa, it took me seven months to raise six million. It's going to take me three weeks to raise uh, 18 million. So, wow, that's funny, Silicon Valley. So, and then boom, we go out, we raise. It was really fast because the product was really, really working. And, uh, and so we got a lot of momentum, a lot of, lot of traction. And momentum is the most important thing in a startup. So we got from that office to new office in Unisquare. And this is more enterprise -y, because we became an eventual enterprise company. But we never forget where we come from. This is what's taken from when we're living in the motel. And I put to the, because I wasn't coding much. My co-founder was really coding. So I put it in the mirror every time he was doing toothbrush in chapter 11. So every time you woke up, and, you t and even if you have any money, you want the best, he wanted the best toothbrush uh, in the world. And, uh, <laughs> and so we get it there. Uh, but every morning we we'll look at this thing to not, like, to not fail. Airbnb had a similar thing with like revenue flat, so you can invent all kind of possibility. Put that in front every morning. And, uh, and so we became from the worst startup of 2010, where nobody really wanted to work for, to one of the best enterprise startup uh, for 2018. And um, obviously it's been a long, long road, a lot of people, a lot of iterations to, to, to get here. And this is obviously one possible without the teams. Uh, that, that gorilla on the back of the head, it's never bet with your sales team. Uh, that's when we reached the first million dollar quarter a year ago. And I say, if you do, if you do that, I'm gonna put a gorilla on my head. And they actually did it. And so I had to put a gorilla on my head. Um, and, uh, and that's a three years. So it's now a company we have, Obviously, there's still a lot to learn, still a lot to do, but that's just to get here, how long it took. And this is really our 25, 55 days, chapter one. Thank you. Thank you.